In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to process refunds and returns using the Help Desk application. So we're going to go into our Help Desk application. We're going to go to Configurations, Help Desk Teams, and we're going to create a new team to handle refunds and returns. So I'll call this Returns and Refunds. You can give it a description if you'd like. There are several settings down below and they'll change depending on the applications you have installed. We have the assignment method, whether we want to manually assign it to our uh, users in our database randomly or balanced. And balance is of course going to be depending on their workload. We have the visibility of the team. If you want to have an email alias attached to um, the help desk so we can process returns or refunds based on emails coming in that will automatically create a help desk ticket. We can also do it from our live chat on our website if we have website installed, a help desk forum. We can track the billable times if you have timesheets. We have SLA policies, customer ratings that can automatically go out, some service, uh, self-service for the community forums that's on our website whether we want these tickets to automatically close, if this is associated with e-learning platform, if the customer can close it inside of their portal. And then we have some after sales stuff, which is what we're going to focus on. So we're going to focus on refunds and returns for this particular help desk team. So we're going to select refunds and returns and we'll click save. Now, if this is the first time selecting these, um, it may install modules behind the scenes that are included in the help desk application. So you might need to refresh the page, which I'll do that now. Now, if we go to our overview, you'll see our new refunds and returns. So we can click into that and we see we do not have any tickets. You can easily add columns. We have new, we can do assigned in progress, or maybe you want to do in progress, we'll do turned, refund, and we'll just do this return, and we can add a final column that's called done. And if you go to edit stage here, you can mark this as the closing stage. Now we have our pipeline set up for our help desk tickets. Let's create a sales order, deliver to the customer, invoice the customer, and then process a return. So we'll go into our sales application. We'll create a new sale for customer one. We can add a product, we'll add product two. We'll sell them two units. We'll save and we will confirm this order. Now we're going to process this delivery. What I'm going to do here is send one unit at a time and create a back order for the remaining. And the only reason I'm going to do that is so that we can have two transfers for this one order or two delivery orders for this one sales order. That way we can see how the system handles that inside of the help desk application. So we'll create a back order here. And then we will go into our back order that's in our chatter. We will set quantities and validate this back order. So now if we go using the breadcrumbs of sales order number 25, we see we have two deliveries associated with this one order and both of them have been shipped out. As you can see, the status is done. So now we'll create the invoice for both of these. We'll create and view this invoice. We'll just confirm this and register the payment. Create payment. You can ignore those extra fields. All right, so now this is in payment. What we want to do now is process a return. So we'll just go back to that sales order once, once again. So we see it's sales order number 25. We're going to go to our help desk application. We're going to create a new ticket manually, but of course, if you have the website 
you can create a form that the customer can fill out or they can email in a return and have this populate a new ticket. So we'll just create one manually for the purpose, purpose of this example and we'll say customer one return. It may give you some information regarding the return. You can add tags down below. So if you want to categorize your returns into different um, categories so that you can do some reporting based on that. Well, we won't focus on that today. I just want you to let you know that that's a possibility. We can have the type of return. Right now we only have question and issue. Uh, we'll mark an issue, but of course you can create additional types by going to configuration and types. Now we want to add the customer. So this is customer one. You can add some information here. If we had that pre-filled out on customer one, then we can um, automatically pull that in. But we'll just leave that blank for now. So now we'll assign it to myself and we'll move it to the assign stage. So you can click assigned right here on the status bar or in our pipeline view, we can drag and drop. So now we're in the assign stage. So the customer may say, hey, I have an order, um, sales order number 25, and I want to return this item. So on the top right here, we see a button that says return. We can click that, and by default, it's only going to show us the deliveries to return. So this shows us all of our warehouse out, so any delivery orders leaving our warehouse that we can select. This is the design by default but sometimes it's much easier to view it by the sales order. So the customer says, hey, sales order number 25, I wanna return some item on that. So the way you can do that is by going into studio. There's actually a field here that's hidden. So we'll show invisible elements and we will, the reference sales order, will take the invisible off. So now that will be visible. And what this will do is allow us to select the sales orders associated with customer one. And once I save this and I click return again, we're going to see delivery to return filters only for that sales order number 25. So we're gonna say that they want to return one of the items. So that back to order item, we're gonna say this was defective and we're gonna return it to our warehouse stock. So this is our default stock location. This is where the item is going to come in. So we're going to click this return. And what that's going to do is create a new record in our returns operation type. And you can see it automatically takes us to that. Now we can go to our dashboard, go into the inventory application. And under our warehouse one, we'll see we have one return to process. And when that item comes into our warehouse from our customer, we can, our warehouse team can process this order and validate that, that we received it back in. And of course, this can get much more complicated if you want to have a sublocation for all of your returns items so that they can then be inspected and determine whether or not they're going to back, go back out for sale or if they need to be returned to your vendor. Um, but we'll just keep it simple for this example. So now going back into our help desk, we would have uh, moved it to in progress, to return, and now this customer has returned the item. And we can come into here and we can see if we go to the returns that this has been done and validated. So we know that the customer has returned the item. So we can go into the refund stage. So now we're going to refund the customer. So we'll move it into the refund stage and we can now click the button refund. And it's going to ask us which invoice we want to refund. For this particular sales order, there was only one, but just like we had multiple delivery orders, we can have multiple invoices for a single sale order. So we're going to select that invoice to refund. And if there was multiple, this is a many to many field. So you can select many different invoices to refund. And we see the reason, help desk ticket number two. You can edit this as needed. So we're going to create this journal entry now. And as you see, it created a customer credit note in the draft stage for the amount of the product sales. We actually only returned one of these items. So we're going to edit the quantity to one. And we could have done that on the return itself. I just forgot. So um, we can edit this 
um, easily right here. So I'm going to save that. And before I process this, we may have a different department that's responsible for processing these credit notes. So I'm just going to go into our accounting software. We're going to go to customer credit notes and we'll see our pending credit note for customer one. So we are sending them money and we're going to process the return outside of the system from wherever payment method they made. So whether it was PayPal or authorized.net or cash or check, you're going to handle that outside the system and tell Odoo, which is your accounting software, that we have processed this return and we refunded that money to the customer and we should see a um, corresponding line on our bank statement when that comes in. So we're going to confirm this and register the payment that we're sending this back to the customer. And now, of course, it's in payment until we reconcile this line on our bank statement. But now when we go back into our help desk, we can move this along to our done stage because we just completed this. Before we do that, we can log a note. We can send a message to the customer. And we can say, you've been refunded. You should receive your refund in X amount of days. You can also set up automated email templates, do that um, depending on the stage up here. So if we uh, looked at our settings, edit stage, you'll see that we have the ability to add an email template. And anything that comes into this view or this, uh, this pipeline stage will automatically get sent out uh, an email to the customer will automatically be sent out. And if we go to this stage right here, the done stage, you can see that we have a ticket solved email template that's built automatically. And once we move this to the done stage, the customer will receive that email. So now we can click into that and you see that this is an automatic message that informs that ticket has been closed and they will receive that in their inbox. So that's how you can use the help desk application to process refunds and returns in Odoo.